I think we should use ranked choice voting. What's that, Peters? It's a system some countries on Earth use for instant runoffs. Voters number their preferred candidates in order. During counting, candidates are eliminated from the race from lowest vote count on up, with their votes reallocated to the next choice of their voters. You avoid the problem of someone most people hate winning a plurality, and get a truer idea of who people will compromise on without needing separate runoff elections. Hmm. But will the voters understand it? It's not that complicated. We only have four candidates who collected enough signatures. People will figure out how to number one to four. I think approval voting is a better option. People vote for all candidates they approve of. But then you don't necessarily learn who the voter favored the most. But we learn who the most people are willing to accept. And that's what matters for keeping the peace. I agree with Chief Hu. Centaurians traditionally vote by secreting the scent of the desired candidate. Whichever scent is most pungent in the room at the end of the allotted time is declared the winner. Let's let's take a quick vote now on whether to use a simple plurality, ranked choice, or approval voting. What kind of vote should we take on it? Plurality, ranked choice, or approval? <sighs> let's come back to that later. At least the other topic of our election should avoid these complications. We can have a simple yes, continue the mission, or no, return to Earth. Actually, Judge, I've been thinking we need to add a third option. What other option could there possibly be? Our current mission isn't the only possible mission. It's a big universe out there. We can go anywhere. Proxima is the closest system. We're already on course, and at least there's somebody there waiting for us, even if it's not the Centaurian homeworld. How does it make any sense to turn a 780-year mission into something far longer by going somewhere else? If my new propulsion concept works out, we could reach a significant fraction of the speed of light. There's a lot of places we could go in a lifetime. As long as we don't try to stop, canceling out our velocity to stop would take decades, and we probably wouldn't have enough ore to re-accelerate and stop in the second system. What's the point of flying past systems without the ability to stop? We could still study them as we pass. Why is everyone in such a hurry to abandon our world? We could probably devise a probe capable of slowing for landing. Maybe even a one-person spacecraft. Slowing a tiny pod quickly is a much easier problem to work on than decelerating our entire world. Of course, it'd be a one-way trip, no way to catch up again. Who's gonna volunteer for that? We're getting ahead of ourselves here. All we need right now is a ballot option to chart our own course into the stars. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. At the turn of the 22nd century, the asteroid 253 Matilda was converted into an interstellar spaceship. Now 92 years into a 780-year mission, generations have come and gone. Episode 7, Choices. Chief Peters? Dr. Peters? What brings you to my office? Detective C. Tang. You know, I probably shouldn't have come. You came here for a reason. You brought me along for a reason. You can't just brush it under the rug and pretend you never thought about it. If you try to, it'll haunt you. Let's talk about it. Well, see, Jesus Maradona is my friend. We've been friends for years. I can read his moods. I can tell when he's being truthful and when he's up to something. And I feel bad about not reporting it when he warned me away from the Arboretum before. But I don't want to just turn on him and betray him and get him harassed or arrested because I shared my suspicions. What are you getting at? He's trying to explain that this is a really sensitive issue and you'll need to handle it carefully. Okay, understood. Come to the point. I don't think Maradona plans to accept the election results if they don't go his way. I think he's planning something. What do you think he's planning? I'm not sure. That's not very helpful. 
I suppose not. He just needed to get it off his conscience. After what happened last time. But you could be very helpful, Chief. What we need is somebody on the inside. Somebody he trusts who can become part of his plan and report back to me. I'm no spy. That's what would make you the best spy. Nobody would ever think you're a spy. But how could I do that to my friend? He trusts me. He'd certainly never forgive me if I do what you're asking. If Maradona isn't up to anything terrible, then you'll never need to report to me, and he'll never know this conversation happened. You'll have done your duty. If he's planning more violence and you turn him in, then you'll have done your duty and saved lives. If he's planning more violence and you don't follow it up, you'll feel complicit, and you'll have to live with that the rest of your life, and I don't think you'll want to remain friends with him. What do you think? The detective's logic is hard to dispute, but could this be dangerous? I'm not asking you to take any risk. You just find out if there's a threat and tell me what it is. I'll take over from there. I'll have a talk with Jesus and try to volunteer my help. But if he asks me to make explosives again, I'll tell him that's off the table. Do each of you swear to respect the results of this election even if they go against you? And not to use any form of violence to try to overturn the results? Yes, I do. Of course. I do. I'll respect any fair results, but I reserve the right to reject the count if it becomes clear that it's fraudulent. Ambassador One, would you like to make an opening statement? As you know, I have been the victim of the vicious attack Jesus Maradona perpetrated on me while I slept. His meddling destroyed my hibernation pod, and I am now faced with living out the rest of my life on this asteroid surrounded by you humans. But let us make the best of a bad situation, let my loss be your gain. No one is better equipped to guide you safely on your mission than I am. No human has anything close to my experience, as I have made three successful interstellar journeys to date in asteroids not unlike this one. Rest assured that I will restore your operations to peak efficiency and beyond. I will employ my superior knowledge, superior intelligence and superior technology to your benefit. The other candidates are simply objectively incapable of offering you what I offer. I humbly request and accept your vote. Thank you. Jesus Maradona, you may make your opening statement. I'm the candidate who can bring change, who can bring us into a new and better era. I'm the candidate with a clear and consistent vision, who's in this to bring that vision to life for all of you, while the others are just in this election to bring themselves power. When you vote for me, you're not voting for a spoiled brat who accidentally became our detective at 24 due to an untimely death and quickly got fired. You're not voting for the last mayor's daughter who's been groomed for power every day of her life and we all know is just a puppet to let our deposed mayor try to continue his failed rule. You're certainly not voting for an alien who spent the last century lying to you. I'm a man of the people, just another hard-working, middle-aged ore processor who's never had anything handed to him, no different from you. A vote for me is power to the people, not the elites. Renata Mutambo, your statement? If you vote for Maradona, you know what you're getting. A radical terrorist who puts us all in danger. If you want us to return to Earth, that's what the other question on your ballot is for. I swear that I'll faithfully implement whatever choice the people make on the question of our destination. There's no need to hand power to a volatile, dangerous criminal who's likely to stoke conflicts that could end us before we can get home to Earth or to wherever we're going. You also know what you're getting if you vote for me. Stability, security, and competence. I'm the only candidate here who has any idea of what the job of mayor involves. I'm not my father, but I've been keenly observing and learning from his experiences over the years. I know how our community functions. I know all the section chiefs. I know our strengths and our weaknesses. I know our problems, and I know how to fix them. Amadi? 
I'm the independent candidate here. I'm not on either side. I entered this race because I don't want to see us ruled by a stooge acting for the old mayor, nor by an ideologue bent on imposing his ideology, nor of course by an alien who doesn't understand our society. I'm here to offer a practical, pragmatic, centrist approach in which we'll reform our system of governance without burning it down. If you're upset with how the former mayor ran things, but you're afraid of what Maradona might do, then I'm your candidate. I do not remember you being neutral when you were holding me against my will, Amadi. Excuse me, Mr. Amadi, but you are Maradona's right-hand man who helped plan and execute the kidnapping of our esteemed ambassador here. How much more on a side can you get? She's got a point there. You're nothing but an opportunist who pretends to pick a side and then betrays your people whenever it suits you. There's no reason for anyone to trust anything you say. I was with Maradona, yes. But I, I drew the line when he ordered me to throw an explosive charge at Mattel. You drew the line by continuing with the kidnapping and only breaking ranks once everything was over. And Patel's blood is still on your hands because you led him into that hail of laser fire. And you assured him they had no defenses. You were our scout, the only one who'd been in there. It was your intelligence failure that got him killed. Well, I'm glad I can provide some common ground for you three. Seems like you're allies now. Maradona is a reckless firebrand who should have been tried for terrorism, who's responsible for a kidnapping and a death who's already caused us too much chaos and suffering. Of course he's the most objectionable candidate. But Amadi has repeatedly shown poor judgment, has gotten too closely involved with Maradona, and clearly bears some responsibility for those terrible events last week, which he's trying to wiggle out of. Amadi was too young and inexperienced when Detective Ekholm's untimely death thrust him into his last job, and now he has the arrogance to expect us to promote him to mayor. This is a moment of crisis. How you vote tomorrow may decide the very survival of our people. We're completely on our own out here, centuries from any help. We can't afford to gamble. We need a steady hand. We need a mayor who's qualified, who's experienced, who's able to provide continuity and order. I think all of us, even my fellow candidates here, know who that is. Hello, Dr. Stone. I've come to check up on your sister. Hi, Doc. How's your leg coming along, Larissa? I've started walking on it. Seems okay. Then I'd like you to start going to the centrifuge. Ugh, I hate the centrifuge. It's important for the bone to have some exposure to high gravity as it heals, or it'll become permanently weak. Always feels like being crushed to a pulp, and I get nauseous. Start slow. Just stand a few minutes for the first day. You know, it's only a fifth of the G in there. Be thankful you're not on Earth. Yeah, I hope we don't end up going to that crusher of a world. So who are you voting for, Doc? Maradona. We have a certain understanding about common priorities. You? I'm leading Amadi. That creep? He's not an ideologue like Maradona. And not a puppet of an old mayor, either. And he did help save my life, after all. Watch out. He'll pass a law saying you have to date him. Hey, that might not be so bad. So who are you voting for, sis? Well, they're all distasteful in their own way. I don't know if I'll vote for any of them. I don't really care who wins, as long as it's somebody who wins decisively, and it's not contested. Let's just put this behind us. Salish, I don't get why you had them add the third mission option to the ballot, if you're committed to our return to Earth. I was trying to split the non-returnist vote. Oh, that makes sense. Would have worked nicely if they'd stuck with the plurality vote, but they went with ranked choice, so I don't think it helps us. Well, anyway, it's great to finally be working together. I was afraid you'd never get off the fence. I thought long and hard about what you said and what I believe. I let you down last time. 
and I felt so helpless listening to news about the insurrection. So this time, I want to be on the inside. This will be a different sort of operation. Just the two of us. What's the plan? I don't want to unnecessarily put it on your conscience if it ends up not being needed. You're not going to tell me? We'll see how the vote goes. Join me for dinner at Marco's Cafe tomorrow, 1800 hours. We'll check the partial tally. If it looks like they've rigged it against us, I'll tell you what we'll do about it. Too many people have been talking about our mission as if it were imposed on us by the Centaurians. We're out here not because of them, but because of Earth. We're here because the international community came together after first contact and decided to make us their envoys to the stars. We're here because they invested tremendous money and resources in us, and they trusted us. We're here because of that first generation of pioneers under Commander Peters who dedicated us to a greater purpose than ourselves, who knew they'd never live to see the fruits of what they built, but nonetheless believed in future generations like ourselves following through for them. If Mission Control says we change course, then we change course. A vote to continue our mission doesn't mean we necessarily still go to Proxima. It only means we give proper consideration to what the 10 billion people we left behind want. We talk about the situation with them, and we wait for them to tell us how they feel and what they recommend. Maybe Earth will tell us to take a vote, and in that vote, you can choose where you'd like us to go. But for this vote, you should choose to stay the course for a few months until we can hear from Mission Control. If you consider yourself a returnist who truly loves Earth, you'll respect Earth's right to have a say in our decision instead of voting for a mutiny against Mission Control. We may be our own world, but we still need to honor our sacred obligations to the rest of humanity to honor the sacrifices of those who came before us and the sacrifices of the entire planet Earth. Thank you. Presenting the argument for returning to Earth, we have apprentice botanist Juliana Sanders. Why should some bureaucrats on Earth decide our destiny? Why should we take orders from people who have no idea what it's really like out here? There probably isn't an adult human being on the entire planet Earth who's only met 200 people in their life. But every one of us is condemned to that isolation. None of us has the option of moving to a new town for new opportunities, or even taking a vacation anywhere new in our whole lives. None of us have seen a sunrise, marveled at a thunderstorm, or felt the wind in our hair. Nobody on Earth has to apply for a birth permit and get on a wait list when they want a baby. Nobody on Earth needs permission to change their career or needs to wait years for an opening in their preferred industry. Nobody on Earth has to eat such a limited diet. Our children and their children deserve better than what we have. And they aren't going to get it if we head off deeper into the void. We owe it to those who will come after us to get them home to the vast green hills and wide blue oceans of Earth as quickly as we can. Making the case for a mission of open-ended exploration, we have apprentice and mechanic Larissa Flint. We aren't Centaurians, and we aren't Earthlings anymore. We're Matildans. This is where we belong. I'm younger than almost all of you, but I've been through a lot lately. I've had to reconsider who I am and what my purpose is. In this referendum, all of you have to do the same. Is your purpose simply the mission you were born into and never questioned, set for you by strangers? Is your purpose to reject the difficult, unwanted task you were born into and seek safety and comfort by retreating? Or do you have the ability to chart your own course? 
a course forward, not backward, but not toward a place somebody selected a century ago with incomplete information, but rather towards a place you can't see but can trust yourself to find on the way? If we continue at our current speed, it'll take centuries to deviate far from our original course, and future generations will be making their own decisions. But if my boss's theoretical propulsion enhancements work out, then it's my generation that will be reaching the stars. In theory, at a constant acceleration of less than half a G, one could cross the entire galaxy through billions of star systems in a single lifetime, albeit hundreds of thousands of years from Earth's perspective. I'm not saying that we'll actually do that. We'd run out of fuel, and collisions with interstellar gas would start to become massive explosions. But I believe we could achieve a significant fraction of the speed of light and reach a handful of stars in my lifetime. Think of what we could learn, what we could see, and all without leaving home. Because this is home, not Earth. What I'm asking for is a leap of faith. Faith in ourselves. We don't need Centaurians or mission controllers telling us what our lives are for. We don't need to have the answers for ourselves yet either. We just need to start the ball rolling without being ruled by fear of failure. If there's one thing I discovered from nearly dying than waking up with parts of my clone's brain in my head, it's that there's something worse than failure. And that's to never have tried, to never have experienced. I believe that we can make something of ourselves by taking on a mission as vast as the universe and as open-ended as our imaginations. Hey there, Ambassador. What brings you to hydroponics? Hey there, terrorist. I have decided it is proper and customary for me as a candidate to make myself visible to all this morning with a general inspection tour. Excited about it being election day? Drumming up those last minute votes? No, I am not excited. I am not a fool. I am well aware I have never had any chance of victory in this election. Then why make this effort? I wish to absolve myself of responsibility for what is to come. I have freely offered my guidance and leadership. Now the future will be on your heads for your choice. Is that a threat? Not at all. It is a disclaimer. I will endure whatever result may come and act only as necessary for my personal safety and that of my sleeping comrades against terrorists and kidnappers such as yourself. Well, I think we'll do just fine with me in charge. It is amusing that you believe you have any better chance in this election than I do. You are not a serious candidate. There are only two in this race. Well, we'll see what the people have to say about that by the end of the day. May I ask what you are doing here, terrorist? Are you also on a tour? Can't you see I'm working? They're rotating me until I apply for an apprenticeship. This is where I'm assigned today. That sounds sad for you. I will leave you to it. I'm stuffed. Time to check out the voting's going? I've been afraid to look so far. Should I look for you? Nah, I'll call it up. That's impossible! There's so many null votes, it's obvious they've tampered. We can't let them get away with this fraud. There's still a few hours of voting left. The results could improve. We're going to make them improve. An hour from now, even those who've already voted will be rushing to change their votes. What's the plan? We're staging a false flag attack to make it look like the Centaurians are trying to take over and force us to continue the mission. How? I took a Centaurian laser rifle during the raid. But if somebody sees you, how do you make people think a Centaurian is wielding it? I have a holographic projector on me. People won't pause to look too closely with laser fire in the air, but they'll catch a glimpse of an ambassador in the middle of it. We just have to make his image advance through a handful of corridors, terrorizing unarmed people. Then make it look like he gives up and retreats to the Centaurian section before Detective Tang gets there to engage him. 
It doesn't have to stand up to careful scrutiny. You just need to convince most people for a few hours. Are you sure nobody's going to get hurt this time? I'll set the laser rifle on low power. So even if I hit some people, they'll be okay. We just want to scare them. And what's my role? I need you to be my lookout. Monitor the corridors ahead of me and direct me to the best spots for being seen. But not seen too closely. Spots where they'll be able to flee quickly, making sure you don't corner anyone? That's right. You won't be far away, but you'll be talking over multicom to my earpiece so nobody realizes we're working together. Come on, my friend. There's no time to lose. This is the little supply room I launched the raid from. It's close enough to the Centaurian section, it'll look like I'm coming from there. Hopefully it won't look like you. Time to turn on the projector. Not bad. It has some flaws when I stand right next to you, but if I were a few meters away and too scared to stare for long, I'd swear you're Ambassador 5. I'm Ambassador 5. You puny humans come. Nice touch. <laughs> Easy to impersonate their voices when they speak through our software. Okay, I'm ready to head out. I'll start by going past hydroponics. I can give them a scare with no more than a glimpse. Keep an eye on the map for movement, and try to keep me going generally counterclockwise through the loop I showed you. Should give me the best chance to evade any resistance and get back here. Got it. Good luck, Jesus. Thanks, my friend. With your help, I won't need luck. Yes, Peters? He's making his move right now. He's using a holographic projector and a laser rifle to make it look like the Centaurians are taking over. Where? Moving out from near the Centaurian section. He just left my location. I'm pretty far from there. I'll warn the ambassadors in case I don't make it in time. Listen, he said we're not going to hurt anybody. His weapon's on low power. I hope that's true, but we can't assume it. Gotta go. He's expecting it here for me. This asteroid is being placed under Centaurian control in order to ensure the continuation of our mission. Surrender, humans. Left at the next section. The public side rooms off that corridor will give them somewhere to flee before they get too close at work. This section is now under Centaurian control. Humans must leave. Maradona. What? H how? Time to pay for your crimes. <laughs> Hey Zeus! I'll be right there! Can you hear me, hey Zeus? Dr. Stone is already on his way! I, I, I think this is beyond his help. What happened here? Justice. Maybe it's for the best. What? Better to die a martyr than to live in defeat. You're not going to die. Doctor, he's hurt bad. There's a laser puncture through his heart, stomach, and lungs. Salish, have have my ashes spread on the earth when you get there, with my ancestors in Argentina. Yes, of course, my friend. But hold on, keep fighting. The doctor can fix this. Uh, uh, Jesus. Jesus? He's dead, Savish. But you brought Flint back. You, you can bring Jesus back, too. Larissa was only brain damaged, while her body continued functioning. I wish it were within my power to bring the dead back to life. I'm sorry, Savish. There's nothing I can do. Attention, announcing final results from the mayoral election. Six first choice votes for Ambassador One. Eight first choice votes for Arash Hamadi. 22 null votes. 52 votes for Jesus Maradona. 73 votes for Renata Matumbo. In the instant runoff, 56 votes for Jesus Maradona and 83 
for our new mayor, Renata Mutombo. Announcing final results from the mission destination vote. 35 null votes, 40 first choice votes to return to Earth, 42 first choice votes to chart a new course, 44 first choice votes to continue the mission. In the instant runoff, 55 votes to continue the mission, and 71 votes for the winning plan to chart a new course into the stars. Some people have all their son a generous, but he never actually had anyone. He was always at a rebellious streak, but only because he cared so deeply about righting the wrongs he saw around him. We can honor my son's members by standing up when something's not right, by speaking up for those without a voice. I know that's what he would have wanted. This is a difficult moment for me. A large part of me feels I shouldn't be here because I feel responsible for Jesus' death. He was my friend, and he died believing I'd done everything I could possibly have done for him. I wish that were true. Jesus was a very polarizing figure. That's part of his legacy. Many of us have conflicting feelings about him. We may have cared for him as a person and sympathized with his agenda, but regretted how he pursued it. But his passion, his zeal for his cause, was part of what made him who he was. It was part of what made us like him. He had the ability to stir us, to rouse us, to force us to think and re-examine our beliefs and those around us. These were great qualities, even if we came to different conclusions than he did about some things. With his death, we've lost a unique and very important piece of our community. But even in death, he still makes us think. He still makes us re-examine our actions and realize we could have done better. Let's keep that part of him alive. We now commit this soul to the flames, that it may be thereby cleansed and that his ashes may help fertilize this arboretum which he is so loved. Mayor, your advisor has arrived. You have a lovely voice, computer. Thank you, Mayor. I was fortunate the former mayor allowed you to provide my voice print. Well, let him in. You locked the door? A simple security precaution, given recent events. Wait, what's he doing here? And why did the door open for him? Biometric identification. He was expected. Welcome, Detective Amadi. Mayor, what's this about? I wanted to let you know I've reinstated you as a detective. You... what? You can't! I mean, you... Why? How could you? Behave yourself, advisor. This is an outrage. I, I, I just won't stand for this. Your mother will hear about this. I'm sure she'll get a good laugh out of it, too. What's this about? Why have you reinstated me? A lot of reasons. Bringing a political opponent into the fold helps establish unity. And I needed a quick way to show my father his place. He needs to know I won't be his puppet. But also, while you may dislike me, you dislike my father more. You'll tell me things the people closer to him won't. For what it's worth, I agreed with your decision to save Larissa Flint. And what about Detective Cite? Given recent events, I'm sure we agree. We need two detectives. You can go now, Detective Amadi. Yes, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Computer, put me through worldwide in 10 seconds. Worldwide broadcast will begin in 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Citizens, this is your Mayor speaking. Many of you feel frightened right now. I understand that. As a community, 
We've just been through a terrible trauma which divided us against each other. We face the possibility of a societal breakdown, and nothing is more frightening than that when you're in interstellar space relying on all systems running smoothly to keep you alive. But we got through it, and we're stronger for it. We've gained a new understanding of how precious peace and stability is, and of how to achieve it. I'm honored that you've selected me to lead us into this new era. None of us got everything we wanted. We compromised for the greater good, for peace. Disappointment is part of any democratic process. We're no longer pursuing the mission we've been dedicated to our whole lives, the mission which our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents were dedicated to. I feel a profound sadness about being the mayor who must preside over the abandonment of the mission. And I know many of you feel the same about that, or about not returning to Earth. But the people have chosen a new mission for us, a mission of open-ended exploration of our galaxy. We must set aside our regrets and dedicate ourselves to this new mission. Right now, none of us knows where we're going. We don't even know how fast we'll be going there, whether it'll be the centuries we're used to expecting, or the mere decades Chief Mech Peters believes we'll be able to travel the stars in. We may spend the rest of our lives in the Oort Cloud, or we may find ourselves passing a multitude of planets and discovering new alien life. None of us knows what the future holds. We can only expect the unexpected. But I do know that by coming together again as a community, we'll be ready to face every challenge and seize every opportunity. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 7, Choices. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerham. Chief Mech Salish Peters is David Loftus. Apprentice Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. Jesus Maradona was Matt Ellis. Mayor Renata Mutombo is Kathleen Lee. Detective Aranya Sitang is Sova Rain. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerham. Ambassador 1 is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Eric. Judge Lee is Rachel Pulliam. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Communications Chief Hu Jia is Steph X. The ex-mayor is Roger Arnold. Dr. Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. Ambassador 5 is the eSpeak speech synthesizer. The human computer is Kathleen Lee. Saunders is Aaron Summonsby. The priest is David Nagel. Maradona's mother was Virginia Hargrove. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org and freepd.com. Additional music by audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org 253. Thank you for listening to the first season of 253 Matilda. If you'd like it to return for another season, please share and rebroadcast it widely. Remember, it's licensed for you to do as you like with, play it on your own channel, or include it as part of your own podcast, or upload it to your own website. Please rate 253 Matilda on podcasting services, and like it on YouTube to help more people discover it. If you have any feedback about the series, or suggestions for the future, please send it to me through the forum on the website.